Hey guys, we're out here on one of four Alberta trout rivers open this time of year. We just happen to be on the small one in the very southwest corner of the province. And here we are. Here we are, yeah. I mean, I think it's going to be, should be a decent day, slightly different day uh, to yesterday that was yep. super sunny. But that actually might really be in our favor. If we get a midge hatch, maybe we'll actually get a riser. Oh, you, you and your hatch <laughs> dreaming of hatches. Well, I know. You know it's yeah. like a 60s show. I dream of hatches. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what do you Come on. Wink, twinkle your toes and twinkle your nose oh. and think, oh, we have a hatch. Well, yeah. Fly fishing doesn't dream of hatches. But yeah, yeah, no, I mean, yesterday, what? We were really focusing on pools. You know, yeah. it needed to be four to five feet deep. Well, and, three to five, I would yeah, say. Yeah, that's but true. For sure. It had to be attached to a pool. And that yes. gravel shelf and drop off trough stuff was where they were stacked up. Yeah. It's gonna be the same thing today. Why? Yeah. Because it's late winter. I mean, it's, it's middle yes. of March, it's not spring. Trout are in their overwintering pool still. They have yeah. not moved out from that. So, exactly. Yeah. So, again, it's gonna be nymphing. I suspect, you know, we'll be looking at a whole bunch. I think yesterday we got a dozen fish in three runs. Yes. And I think we had five or six different flies that worked. We weren't. It was just all about size and depth more than any other way. So I'll keep, I'll keep focusing on moving into position with short casts on the four weight because, you know, I, my five weight's just hanging on the garage wall, but why be smart about it, right? Nah. So, yeah, no. Stick to your four well. Four weight, uh, yeah. nine foot leader to a tippet ring, and then five X off that, about 18 inches down with two flies. And it's just going to be tungsten size, probably eight, 10, 14, 16s. Um, if we have to go midging, well, so be it, but yeah. yeah. Exactly. Go take it on. Alrighty. A gorgeous way to start the day, hey? Absolutely. Shall we? Absolutely. Let her go. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, man. Just first cast of the day, and just right in that broken rock, and just right in the seam line. And first cast, just flip it in there, drift through, bang, size 12, hairs here, pearlescent tail, and you know, stone flies. Always don't fly this time of year. Well, I know this next run is best fish from this left side because the, the majority of, oh, fish right in front of me. Shoot, fish right here, Dave. Oh, yeah. I came out and he was right there. Okay, so I got a little pocket right up in front of me. It's got really nice broken choppy water and not always the easiest stuff to approach and get into because there's really a one little pocket in here okay so i got a tight little pocket here it's a really short drift um, i'm about three feet down two flies two tungstens the thing is you cannot forget about that little pocket towards the back end because you just don't know if they're going to be sitting there i think Got to be a great place for a fish here. Just a nice little, keep your fly line on the edge of the pocket. Don't line it with your fly line. Get your leader in there and just up, pause, up, and just on the edge. See that fly line stopping right on the edge there. Geez, it's great water, but it's not amazing. And I'm looking in there as I step up. I always want to look. Um, they're going to be probably nosed into that shelf at the top because the back end's a little exposed and a little flat. So as I get in there, I've covered off the inside seam. I can see with that sun, I'm not seeing any smudges. So I think I see a smudge right up in the heart here. So I'm just gonna go right at that. First cast up there, and then the next one will be a foot over, and a foot over, and a foot over, and we'll just finish this with about three more drifts in here. And we'll just see what these fish have to say if anybody's home and, and active. Right in there, number two. Another foot of line. I know there has to be a fish in here. Am I deep enough? Sometimes when you get that flat rock bottom, your flies don't tick. They just glide. 
So you don't know if they're hanging too high or if they're just gliding. See that one right there is paused, stuck, and popped. So I hit bottom. So I'm within at least six or eight inches of the bottom as I come through here. One more up the head there, right into that slot. Tick, tick, tick. Yeah, it's just flat bottom. So if there's going to be a fish here, it's going to be one fish. Not heaps of them because there's just not enough broken rock to cut current to be a prime bit of holding water in the winter. Funny water though. Looks great, looks great. Ain't great, ain't great. But it's got depth, but it doesn't have lots. I like the I like the chop on the surface. I like that it's a long run. What I don't like is it just doesn't have that I'm gonna stay here over winter look, you know? You use that wind anytime it comes up to, to let you slide into flat water like that. So if you're having troubles casting into the wind, make sure you up, pause, long pause, up, pause, and out. Boy, that's just searching water and searching while you're nymphing in shallow, shallow stuff that you cannot see. I know there's a trough over yonder. We've come to water. The theory so far in this year and this winter with one cumac of water flow, which is what, 35 CFS, um, <laughs> gotta be thigh deep. Fish are in pockets thigh deep or deeper. And they could be nosed into a foot drop off, but they have to be attached to something thigh deep or deeper. And that's got this in spades. My problem is I end up looking for smudges along the bottom or any flashes of nymphing fish as I get in here. Heaps of midges around my indicator. There we go. That's good fish. Nice. Right off that drop off. Couldn't help but be there. And of course, he yeah, just has to go and let all his friends know, you know? Keep her low, offset. Come on, fish. Just turn. There we go. Walk it backwards, Davy. Uh, here we go. So that fish, really, that fish was just a game of rotation. Just keep feeding the fish. Keeps, you know, a foot to the left, foot to the right, three feet left, three feet right. There's, there's a real obvious trough of where those fish are going to be in here. Amelia is right downtown Main Street right now in a perfect spot. And yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of up, in, feed the fish. There's only so many places these guys are gonna be. And just keep feeding the dang things, you know? Yeah? There we go. Yeah, it's just that trough line, eh? Yeah. Oh, and he's off. I forced that one pretty hard. Yeah, I got the perfect line in here. And again, it's just a little left, a little right. And then I'm going to go back off. I like to try to do this to rest pieces so I don't keep hammering the top of the, on their heads with the fly line. So as I come up here, I know that the depths are going to be right along up where we've got that nice little bit of foam coming in. Now I'm a little bit shy right now. I know I need to get a little further out into that current. That should start to be where I want to be. It is kind of the perfect flow of water. And I'm thinking that as I slowly move across the current, kind of out into there, that's gonna get me just that perfect little drift all the way through this slightly deeper water. Well, we got into some depth here again, so getting a little bit more hopeful that we might hook up into something. There we go, that's the drift I want. Again, right off that rise of gravel. There we go, yeah, just hooked into one. I just turned this off. 
hooked into one right in the spot where I thought I should. I actually had shortened up my distance from my indicator to my fly. Got right at that head but slot. right in the head slot, and that's where it came from. He's a hot little bugger. Keep him out of there. Watch out, watch out. There we go. Yeah. Ish, ish, ish. Yeah. Go for it. Nice. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Hey, nice fish, love. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. That was a nice fish. Yeah, nice fish. Check the green stonefly. Really nice fish. Nice female. Very pretty. Awesome. What? Beauty, hey? Yeah. Go, yeah. Go for Enjoyed it. Enjoyed that. Okay, here she goes. Nice. Right in that top Shot slot, off. eh? Yeah, just in that top slot, you know. I had fished kind of below it in some deeper water for quite some time and I was, you know, five feet from my indicator down to down to my flies and just nothing, nothing, nothing in spots that I would expect them to be. And then I hadn't quite gotten to that top slot. And, you know, I, I drift my flies into a shallow bit that just dropped off and it was shortly after it drifted through there and boom. You raised your indicator, I thought, or yeah. Yeah, I had, I raised that? it up to three feet. <laughs> three feet, lowered three feet it. from indicator it. to the bottom fly, yeah. And uh, sure enough, yeah, there it there was. So she was. Nice fish. Um, it was actually yeah, it's long, taken, hey? Yeah. It had to be 19 or 20 inch female, a little slender, but. Yeah, little little uneventful today in terms of a lot of places that, you know, we'd hope to see fish, but. We've only really seen yeah. fish in three spots because yeah. there's just not been that waist deep wintering yeah. water. There just really hasn't. So, you know, you take what you get and I really enjoy that. It was a beautiful, beautiful female, right? So I had just picked off that fish right up in this top slot. I just come off a flat rock I can see on the bottom and I was drifting right into this zone when I hooked up in that to that beautiful female. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those things where the wind is coming and going and we're trying to do this on dry fly. Long leader, I think it was 15 foot, 14 foot to 5X, little size 18 Griffith snap. And we're gonna have to go real slow because we want to get into the spot. And it's gonna be like, you know, the old tragically hip song, an inch, an hour, two feet a day getting in here. Um, I suspect that if we're lucky enough to get one, uh, it's gonna have to be a real tug of war pulling the fish back this way. Because if one fish jumps, jumps, jumps and screams through there, it's over. Chances are it's a one and done anyway, but well, let's go. Let's go inch and tiptoe in there. There's one just cruising the shoreline right through there, so that's pretty cool. Sweet. Yeah, I can see two up the shoreline there, but I don't. I can't just jump in, obviously. Um, I'd like to see a shadow cruising. That's our hope here, hey? What's that? That's our hope here. Yeah, should show soon. There's one there. I don't want to cast from here, though. Yeah. I should be in a sweet spot right here, you know? I think so. Just get my feet under me. I love that, sweetie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. There you go. Yeah. Well, that's a nice way to start the year on a dry fly. Absolutely. Worth right. taking the time. Would that take about half an hour, 45 minutes to set that up? Sure did, because huh. that wind kept coming and going <laughs> and coming and going. And... Game of patience. Well, we've got to rest. I think, we'll minutes. see. Oh, yeah. In the time that this this next wind goes five, six, eight minutes, guess what's going to happen? The fish are going to settle out, and I'll probably have a chance at the at, at things when things settle out, and I can see where they're stacked up again before that wind picks up. Go for it. Oh, yeah. Nice. 
<laughs> Just, oh, he's off. Oh. Just as well. Okay, gotta settle him out again. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, though, that hey? moved a lot of fish, that one, though. Yeah. That, was, that was a really nice fish. Bugger. <laughs> So I'm out here and because I saw the wind forecast was light wind, I grabbed the four weight, uh, double taper line. Uh, I always fish double taper on this kind of water. And a smarter guy than me would have made sure that he uh, had a leader on his line before he left the house. But because first day, of the, first day of the year issues, I don't have a leader. So what did I build? Five foot of zero X and three feet of two X. I think I put three feet of four and three feet of five, so I'm somewhere in that 14, 15 foot length. And it's causing me a little bit of trouble because I don't have that butt section that transfers uh, from the fly line to the to, through the thick butt section of the leader. So my casts are a little bit owned by the wind unless I up my line speed, but I have to check that on this kind of water. So that all goes down to a little size, hey shocker, a little size 14 <laughs> tan elk hair caddis. And then I'm down about 20 inches. And all this is, honest to God, is this kind of like a little dark hair's ear with two strands of copper uh, crystal flash or some kind of flash, Crelex maybe. And that's a, you know, the, it's a 14 on the dry and about a 16 on the nymph. I saw some terrestrial moths, that kind of thing. And I know that there's, heaps of little mayfly nymphs and there has to be the the early winter black late winter black stone flies that are about to hit so generalistic stuff but i've had all fish take my dry fly so far so you like that especially for march 15th yeah or 13th <laughs> or 13th so yeah that, that's what we are the, right the wind's dropping yeah. so i better get my glasses back on here and see if i can see another bit of movement here <laughs> 